Welcome back to the show. Today, I've got a good friend of mine. This isn't our first podcast, if believe it or not. Monster Jam truck driver, Ashley Sanford's in the building. What's up? Yes. Oh my gosh. It's like a high school reunion. All over again. It's <laughs> wild. We were just kind of catching up and it's crazy how much like crossover there is in like our friends and our like histories and like schools. You went to Troy, right? Yeah. And I went Troy to Fullerton and all the people know in between that. It's just crazy. It is. I know. And I love getting to reconnect and it's been all this time, but it feels like no time has passed. And no, not at all. I'm so excited for the growth we've both experienced throughout our lives. Absolutely. It's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> You've been up to some really cool stuff. So this is not, this is our second podcast, third mm -hmm. time working together, yeah. which is crazy. I know. Um, the last time we talked, you were a top fuel drag racer. Correct. Um, when did you make the switch? Oh my gosh. It's so wild. I mean, I'm very grateful. I've, since I was a little girl, I wanted to go fast and I wanted to do these crazy things. And I made that dream come true of becoming a top fuel drag racer, going 300 plus miles per hour. But I had another dream and I made it come true. And it was being a monster jam driver, driving monster trucks, working with monster jam. And it really felt like that unattainable dream of like, I don't even know anyone. Where do I get started? How do I even begin? Yeah. But Holy moly, we're here, we're doing it. Two and a half years in. <laughs> no, absolutely. Now, did you have those dreams at the same time or was it like one ended and the next started? No, it's so crazy looking back. I just wanted to go fast. <laughs> I sound like Ricky Bobby, right? <laughs> I really did. And so I, as a little girl, anything that I saw that would get someone's adrenaline going, watching yeah. them would get my adrenaline going. Yeah. And I just only could imagine having that opportunity to be the person behind the wheel and to experience that. And I mean, even from watching people on boats or planes or on the ground, but really that's where I feel like my heart and I guess my hands took me and that was yeah. to racing. Yeah. And so drag racing and Monster Jam, I grew up going, we're Southern California kids. There's a couple of local spots yeah. that are massively worldwide known um, for both Monster Jam and drag racing. Drag racing seen over in Pomona, the Pomona Fairplex is kind of like the birthplace of drag racing, if you will. Yeah. So getting to grow up, going out there, watching that was just so cool. And then as well on the Monster Jam side, Anaheim Stadium, Angel Stadium yeah. is one of the biggest venues for Monster Jam where they come multiple times a year. So I grew up getting to watch that as well. So really, I was so spoiled yeah. that in my backyard had these massive entities of motorsports coming to town. And I grew up watching that thinking that is the coolest thing ever. And I want to do it and I'm going to do it. Yeah. And that's so it. cool. <laughs> and you know, what's funny is like um, what's really cool is, you know, I'm having kids now and I've got a lot of friend parents and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally watching people watching you race and then <laughs> posting about it. And then you're posting that you were like racing. And I was like, that's the same thing. I How know. cool. Wait, it's so awesome. You mentioned this because I'm 30 years old, which is actually a little bit on the older side for oh. some of the monster jam huh. drivers for some of the monster truck drivers that yeah. I compete with. But it's so cool because I'm in this phase in my life where mm. so many of my friends, they have families now and they have the little ones who are coming to these events and looking up to these trucks and looking up to Megalodon, the truck I'm in yeah. and sending me videos of their kids playing with the trucks and cheering me on. And it's just so surreal and full circle to be in this position now yeah. Yeah. that I'm the one these kids are looking up to and I'm the one behind the wheel. It's amazing. Yeah, that is so cool. It's so funny you say like growing up, you watched racers and, and monster trucks and it kind of like got you super excited about it. Cause like, we're so human. Like I'm the same yeah. way when I growing up and I, it's so funny. I just had like a nostalgic moment watching Blink-182 live. I watched, I mean, I watched music life. I can't yeah. not imagine my life playing music. Cause I used to have a band and stuff. So that was all a different life for me. But yeah. I've even since, cause I just watched them like a month ago uh -huh. uh, with Nadia and I, and I was like, I need to just start a Blink cover band. I'm doing it. And I'm doing it. Why not? I, I, and it's so true because I, like one thing I've been pushing since I've been in this position, because at our Monster Jam events, it is family friendly. Yeah. We definitely are like pushing for the kids for sure. Yeah. But at the same time, it's opened my eyes, which I mean, I've always been someone young at heart, but I'm telling everyone when you come to these events, when you do anything in life, 
make sure you're taking care of your inner child. Yes. You know, take care of that kid who gets excited. Yes. And because that's the joy we all need to be living for. And so it's so fun yeah. getting to really bring that out of people when yeah. they come to these events. Yeah. And because, yeah, the kids are going nuts. But why can't you be going nuts too? Like, get up and down, dance on the dance that's cam. Right. And so, yeah, get that band going, Ricky. It's and so, let yeah. that inner kid sing. Maybe one day. But yeah, no, it's just funny that the the just the way that it works out like i watched it i needed to do it and you're doing it which is really cool um for the people at home who don't know what monster jam is give us like the rundown monster jam monster trucks yeah. we're talking at twelve thousand pounds i mean these guys are units of weight yeah but you know what's insane these trucks they are so massive yeah. but it is so technical the work that we right. do in these trucks right so you could find them from arenas to stadiums or different floors yep. and i mean these arenas that i've been going to are tiny hockey floors and so we're taking these trucks that are 1500 horsepower <laughs> they're they really want to go yeah they, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. want to shoot to the moon they to take them into these controlled areas and do these technical moves where we're taking these trucks, balancing them on our front back tires, one tire, two tire, yeah. upside down. We're doing backflips, moonwalks. Yeah. It, there's poppers, stoppies. I mean, these tricks and names of them, it's just crazy yeah. nowadays when really before they used to just crush cars. Right. And so Monster Jam has taken all that and made it a spectacle. Yeah. And as a driver, it has been so challenging but so rewarding to learn this completely new style of driving right and yeah, really <laughs> you went from racing to now you're doing tricks right exactly and so there actually still is um a racing component as well okay. but tricks are a massive part of monster jam so that's huge and new totally that makes sense can you walk me through that is it two different yeah. avenues like you're racing and doing like a freestyle or like how does that work out yeah so at a monster jam event you'll most likely if you come to an arena event which are the events i do you're gonna see four different events um all in one okay. starting with racing okay which is i i my name on social media is Ashley Racer Girls, so it gets me going yeah. every time we get to go racing yeah, yeah. because it's the one event where it's actually not judged. It's not right. scored. Everything else is scored. So it's just heads up racing. Whoever's the fastest is going to be the winner. And so you start <laughs> cool. off with that and yeah. we kind of just do a little circle around our obstacle or pod in the yeah. center. Yeah. And then after that, we go into our two wheel skills competition. Once we have that winner crowned, two wheel skills is like what I mentioned. Yeah. Everyone's coming coming out you get two opportunities and when i say you get two opportunities we don't have practice okay this is truly going out there and trying everything we can with yeah. a twelve thousand pound beast no that totally. most likely doesn't want to go the direction you're pushing it in yeah and so you have to try and balance the truck or get it oh up and gosh. maybe even just a cool sky wheelie i yeah. like to do those too <laughs> That's so crazy. You don't get test runs. No. So before the event, we'll go out and do a practice okay. race pass yep. just to feel out the dirt, just to make sure the truck's running. But that's it. So, yeah, the rest of the event, we go into donuts as well. There's a donut competition. Yeah. yeah no practice in that. You're just going out and you're just <laughs> throwing out your best donut in a tiny little spot. That's crazy. And then the final competition, which is my favorite and a lot of people's favorite to come out, is the freestyle competition where you have a set time on the clock yeah. and you have the whole floor to work with and do it ever your heart intends and yeah. that's usually where I just let loose and it's like a therapy session for me sometimes <laughs> that's so cool so that's cool so four total events yeah and you compete in all of them and you compete in all of them super yep. cool when did or how I imagine practice for someone for something like this is yeah. expensive <laughs> Yeah. And so, I mean, that's one thing that coming from my drag racing yeah. background to now working with Monster Jam, it's been such a shift because before in drag racing, I had a family team and yeah. we collected our own sponsorship and funding to get on the track. And similarly, we didn't get to practice a lot as well because to go out and practice, it costs Expensive. money. And so our funds, even though I was so grateful to accomplish what we did, we didn't have the funds that a lot of other people did. And so right. I didn't get a lot of practice. A lot of my right. practice was done on the racetrack. So in a way, I guess, prepared me for Monster Jam, whereas Monster Jam, I work for Feld, actually. Feld is an entertainment company. They own Disney on Ice. Oh. They do Marvel Live. 
the uh, Barnum and Bailey Circus is actually where it all started for them. Got and, it. Wow. Um, yeah. And That's so crazy. pretty crazy, right? Now Monster Jam's their baby. Yeah. And so it's so crazy that I get to now show up drive the crews there the crews paid for to take care of anything yep. in which yep. our technicians our crew are incredible and yeah they are there to fix whatever needs fixing and so That's it's been crazy. crazy adjusting from being so cautious of breakage <laughs> and anything because it was coming from my pocket to now being on this break side it. of it and it's like break it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no it's awesome the fans love it and you know still feel bad for my crew chief who has to work on it totally but, totally yeah hey, it's part of the job yeah yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah and that is a crazy like opposite frame of mind yeah. like be careful don't break anything to just go out there and go crazy right super cool megalodon you drive a big ass shark i know how did you how does that come about are you you like assigned a car did you pick a, like how does that work you got it right so you were assigned your truck and before truck. even getting hired though <laughs> i didn't even know if I was going to have an opportunity to drive with Monster Jam because they send you through, which I think is the kind of cool thing to mention. Yeah. You go to Monster Jam University before right. you get hired. And <laughs> it's not a real university, yeah. but it's the coolest university I will ever go to because right. you spend a few weeks out in the middle of Illinois getting to know the trucks getting to practice these events. And at that point they say, okay, thank you for coming. And you don't hear anything. And you're like, do I have a job? Do I not? Oh. And so I had finally got a call yeah. and was like, Hey, you did great. Would you like to drive Megalodon for us? And it was like, as for me, as life changing of a call that was, it yeah. was just such a simple, easy little call for them to make over to me and just, asked if I would like to be in Megalodon and rewind for a second. I'm a shark girl. Yeah. I celebrate shark week. Okay? okay. I've been doing this for years. Blue is my favorite color. I'm a beach girl. Like I love the ocean. Yeah. I've always said I wanted to go dive with sharks. Yeah. And so when I got this call, I was actually working at a waitress at the time. Yeah. You know, things were up in the air for me. It really was a miracle that came into my life. And then it was Megalodon. So it was like the cherry on top, the That's... coolest truck in my opinion. You like, uh, you was... manifested that. You're like, I love all these things. This is what I want to do. I'm doing it. Yeah, no, truly. And I unintentionally manifested it looking back now and the power in that. Isn't that so cool? Yeah, that's really, really cool. <laughs> I mean, just your thoughts are so important. Yeah. Um, so damn. Okay, cool. Right. Oh, I had a question. Um, you went to Monster Jam University, where is, which is basically how you qualify to mm -hmm. become a driver. Correct. How do you yeah. get invited to Monster Jam University? So yeah, rewind one more time. It, it all starts with an audition. Okay. It is so bizarre. Not the typical job interview because you go over to Florida and you get to speak with the whole team that is there. You get to see the shop. They give you this whole grand tour and then they put you on the spot and are like, okay, you're going to go through all these mock interviews and these spotlighted rooms with all these people watching you. Pretend like you just won and go. And terrifying, right? For especially a lot of people who don't have that experience. I'm very grateful. Yeah. My drag racing experience definitely gave me that confidence yeah. going into yeah, yeah. that. But yeah, it starts off truly just wanting for them to get to know the person and so it starts off with interview based auditions that That's way and so just really getting to know you and once you pass that then they'll send you out to monster jam university where you get to get behind the wheel how many people were there in the university with you so it started off with a group of 24 at okay. that first audition okay. in person yep. the speaking interviews mm -hmm. They cut that down in half, and that was for the um, interviews, or I'm sorry, the driving interviews. Right. And then they cut that in half again to go through the full Monster Jam University. So there were six of us. Oh, wow. And, for one position? And it ended up being, I mean, it was for two positions okay, at the it. end of the day. Jeez. And so i very grateful. It, yeah, it was a dream come How true. How long is the process? Like the, from start to finish? So I'm... Gosh, I guess because it just depends per person. But for me, it was on paper. My very first audition to getting hired, actually, I auditioned my first time in 2019 okay. and got hired in 22. Okay. So, oh, wow. yeah, three oh, shoot. years right there. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. What a like, what a process. I guess, it, you know, the, all of these things that you watch and see, you never really think about yeah. what it takes to get there. So it to is. hear the process to it's become this Monster Jam truck driver is crazy. Not that easy. No, it isn't. You really have to be passionate about yeah. it. And I actually get people who message me all the time. Like, how'd you get started? Yeah. How do I get into it? And you got to be passionate because it takes the blood, sweat, and tears. Totally. And if you're not passionate about it, it's going to get discouraging because it, yeah, it's not that easy. It takes that time. It takes the patience. But if you are, you know, if your heart is truly desired towards something, you're always yeah. going to have that there. So just be patient and keep holding on. Keep trying. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Different question because we're talking about like, you know, the behind the scenes of what it takes to get you there. But what's the behind the scenes of like your day to day as like a professional monster jam truck driver? This is like your full time job. Like, what does that look like? What are the other things that you have to do? So on a day to day, let's say like because we do tours Mm. and um, this year we toured from January to May, 18 weeks in a row. I was leaving. I was doing that. I know Thursday morning. (laughs) be gone all weekend get back Monday at some time and I have yeah Tuesday Wednesday to kind of collect myself recharge and go out and do it again and Tuesday and Wednesday so Tuesday, two days to two just days. reset Ooh, okay I know so it, it's intense yeah. it is yeah. and but at the same time that's kind of just how I've always lived my life so I I I invite it I yeah. welcome it yeah um and um but on a day-to-day I've actually I have slowed down. I am a grandma now and I am a grandma and proud. I am zero or 100 and I am so proud of that. (laughs) So, um, no, I really do, which I mean, talking about what we do with driving these trucks, the impact, the physical impact we take, I need those rest days. I need those recoup days and I do a lot of yoga. Oh, Mm -hmm. I love yoga. It's been really great for my body and yeah, just taking care of myself and then we do like a lot of media stuff as well so there's a lot of the times where I'll be home but I'll have to get up at 6 a.m. for a radio interview you know wherever next town we're going to or have to hop on a zoom call for one of the news stations right so it's always non-stop yeah and um but at the same time when I have those moments to breathe oh I am breathing slow (laughs) I'm breathing real slow that's so funny so I know we talked a little about a little about this before before we like started the podcast, yeah. but the collision, like the the impact on your body, like what is that like? Because I guess it makes sense when you think about it, yeah. but you guys make it look so effortless that um, I guess you don't think about it. Yeah, right. Which and I mean, these trucks are designed to absorb the impacts sure. we take. We have the safety equipment we're wearing, yeah. and the shocks do their jobs. The tires do their jobs. They yeah. really soak yeah. up a lot of that. But at the same time, these trucks, the, it, this is truly unscripted. Every time we go out there, we're driving like we want to win every time we're yep. behind the wheel. And sometimes you're going to tip over, push yourself into a situation that hurts a lot more than others. And yeah, it definitely does take a toll on your body because yeah. in a sense, you are every weekend going out and getting in car crashes <laughs> for a living. And so, yeah, um, it definitely takes a toll physically but I've been very passionate about taking care of myself as much as I am having fun behind the wheel because it's important and (laughs) injuries can happen I've seen a lot of them I mean I've had close calls myself but yeah that's where it's just you know the heart right Mm. my heart always takes me back here yeah you're like you're gonna do it you're gonna do it I might get hurt but I'm gonna do it (laughs) what does like an injury in this sport kind of like, what's a common injury that you see in Monster Monster Jam truck driving? Well, you know, it's more so a bumped and bruises is a normal injury yep. for sure. But um, one to look out for, I wouldn't say any injuries are necessarily common. Sure. It's just what is, you know, more susceptible to getting is like head injuries, concussions. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there was actually one of our biggest drivers tom mentz he is the goat of monster truck yeah, driving yeah. this year he got in a pretty bad wreck and it took him out he actually is very grateful he walked away because i i wish i knew the exact extent but he um had a spinal injury or a neck injury oh, and man. that's another big one that we're just putting so much on our backs on our yeah, spines yeah. and our necks but even then we have the equipment we're wearing the safety equipment oh my gosh but 
it's a risk. No, it's, it's scary. We're still very much dancing on that line. It's like any <laughs> other. It's like any other sport. You know, yeah, football no, players is. put all their pads on. Exactly, they but they're still the doing time. it. Yeah. Exactly, and they still do it. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's the risk we take. <laughs> not the injury part is cool. It's just cool that you have such a cool job. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Same with football players, but you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. No. What is your, what was one close call that you had where you were like, oh, that could have been, that could have <laughs> been bad. Um, gosh. Well, I feel like in all my motorsports, even just like yeah. where it started for me, I'm a recreational rider. I grew sure. up going to Ocotillo Wells, off-roading and stuff like that. And definitely have had close calls, but as far as Monster Jam goes, yeah. The biggest close call, and as much as, hey, when we hit the floor, we're letting loose, I still am very cautious because we're in tight buildings. Right. And sometimes we're in a really, really nice building. Right. Like, I'm talking, we were just at crypto, right? Yeah, and yeah, And yeah. crypto has, you know events and yeah. concerts and mm -hmm. things booked out for probably the next five years. And if any truck were to ever do damage, you are essentially putting, you're blocking out those events or you're oh. canceling those concerts. And so if there's any damage that needs to be done, that can be a bad mark on your record. So as <sighs> much as we're letting loose, we're so scared of hitting the wall, right. hitting, doing building damage. Yes. So I have had close calls in that aspect oh my where, gosh. I mean, cause we're talking once again, a 12,000 pound truck. We're flying in the air in a hockey arena and oh momentum, gravity, She's been around a long time. You can't stop her. No, not, <laughs> no, not if you're rolling. Not Sheesh. if you're rolling a 12,000 pound truck. So I've had close calls. Actually, I just brought up LA because I ended up doing this forward momentum front flip yeah. and just barely missed the stands. Yeah. And oh, my heart dropped. I made eye contact. The, the <laughs> I'm going to rewind. I made eye contact with the woman in front of me and we both oh, had no. eyes so wide. Oh no, like I'm going to hit you. I'm like, hi, uh. Megalodon is in your face right now. Oh, I'm so glad gosh. I'm not any closer than this. You could probably touch the teeth, but Jeez. yeah, that, that was scary. Wow. <laughs> but we did it. It was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> It was great. Okay, so Nothing yeah, bad happened. This no. is, yeah. I was uh, going to say where we learn where the line is, right? Yes, like, yes. where can we cross the line? Right. I was right. Yeah. On like, the line. that's your line that was for, uh, for, for building damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, that is awesome. And what an interesting perspective. I guess you never, like, I would never think about, like, well, don't f up the building because that's going to be bad for your career. Yeah. Uh, but no, but it, very it makes much sense, a though. thing. Very yeah, much makes, a fear we all have to keep in our heads. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's, let's talk social media a bit because it's pretty cool that you have all these fans, like, tagging you and resharing and doing stuff like that. That's, yeah. How is that feeling for you? It's so crazy to yeah, me, the whole yeah. world of social media. Yes. It's been, I mean, ever since it started, since I started racing in the last 15 years, I feel like it is, I mean, it's always been big, but it's just a necessary thing, yeah. a part of all our days now. Yeah. And to have this backing of people that, you know, I've met once or maybe never even met before to have like that support is such a cool and surreal. It really is surreal for me. And I'm so grateful because I have always said I want to be authentic. I want to be genuine. And I always am going to be 100% real in myself on social yeah. media. And so much social media is like fabricated. Right. So much of it is. And I mean, I'm guilty of it. of it too, of like, you know, you only see the good, you know, it's the highlight reel and all that. Yeah. But at the same time, like I still take the pride in trying to keep it real. And I've like kept that, I feel like open, yeah. you know, on yeah. this platform. And even then, like I am always messaging anyone who messages me on Instagram. So if people ask me questions or want to know this or that, like yeah. I want it to be like that safe space where people can be like, okay, yeah, she's doing this cool stuff, but she's still super real about that's it. Cool. And that's one thing that as much as social media can get like overwhelming and crazy, yeah. I am like so grateful for that side of it because totally. 
even how big it is, I'm still grateful to have that like community, that relatableness yeah. that I share with people. No, 100%. And yeah. how have you been? Because I see you post clips and stuff. Now, do you have like your own team out there or is it like Monster Jam's team? Like how do you, how does that work? Yeah, interesting enough that that's all me right there. And so Jam, they're from what we understand working towards getting better okay. as far as collaborating and doing more things. But um, yeah, no, what we do is we get videos a lot of the times from people in the stands. Cool. <laughs> Some of them are like really like camera, nice camera shot though. Yeah, are they no, just there with nice camera shooting? People have nice cameras or the venues themselves. Wow. They'll, will use their equipment yeah. and then take that um, from, cause we're doing YouTube live now, which is huge. Yeah. And so I, gosh, I'll just screen record things and That's piece so cool. them together. And yeah. yeah, do it. I, I'm a one, stop shop over here I, I do it all so I put together all my content yeah, which yeah, yeah. It, for me I am so impressed <clears throat> with you and all the content you do Thank you. because it's a job yeah. oh my gosh and I we were kind of talking about this earlier too I am like a little OCD perfectionist sometimes yeah, and when I'm putting together these videos I don't even want to tell people how long it takes me like you know it's funny <laughs> I am I feel that so hard because I'll make little family videos uh -huh. and I'm like well me and me and the family went to Disneyland and I spent 10 hours making that. So yeah. <laughs> great. Great. Right. It's just because like you see one thing and you're like, no, that's got to be better. And then mm -hmm. the OCD of it all is really kind of takes and you. Like, it could take you down. Oh, my gosh. With the editing and the sounds and yeah. oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's. It's a job. I totally it is know a that. Job. It is. <laughs> so well, then uh, you know, holler at Monster Jam. I mean, we do social media, so we can do your whole event. Clip it up. Right? We'll get you guys right. We'll Jam. get that social media right. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, I was. Oh, do you guys have sponsors in this sport? Like, because the yeah. way it's set up, it sounds different. Because I know it, when you're racing, mm -hmm. that was like all sponsorship driven, yeah. right? Yeah. So how is it now? So yeah, prior I went out. And I, I mean, I couldn't even do an event until I had found my sponsorship right. is how I had drove before. Right. And now with Monster Jam, they they do have their own funds, but they also do work with sponsors. So there's a handful of drivers who have deals, but it's within the company. If I were to get something outside and bring it in, yeah. they'd be open to it. But it have to be aligned with what they're working on. Got it. So it's not as common to see that. But like we have big ones like Lucas Oil is a huge right, one and right. actually a sponsor I'd had in drag racing prior. Yeah. So that's really cool that they are involved. And Are they involved with Monster Jam or are they involved with you and then Monster Jam? They're involved with Monster Jam. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. So I'm not personally connected to any of the okay. sponsors in yeah. Monster Jam. I. I'm just connected to Megalodon and that's just fine. It's actually a little relaxing to yeah, not have I imagine, that pressure. <laughs> I imagine like, yeah, because yes, I imagine not having to answer to sponsors would yeah. be a little, keep you a little more mentally free right. when you're out there performing, which is crazy. Yeah. You've got a lot to think about when you're just doing that. Exactly. No, I, when it comes to Megalodon, the truck I'm in, it is actually, it's been around with Monster Jam. We're coming up on 10 years soon, but it has, oh, I'm like trying to think, I think we have six or seven Megalodon drivers. Oh, wow. It is a popular truck. So I get to just go out there and it's it's so great. I The fans already love Megalodon. They, yeah. I am already getting the shark love just by seeing the shark yep. and it has that fan base. Yep. And yeah, and get to hang out with my shark people. You get to hang out with the shark people. <laughs> now, when is, or when is your next like tour? When's your next um, set of set of races? So I'm actually on a break right now, which oh. is pretty nice. I have one more event um, to look forward to next month okay. in Vancouver. And then it oh. starts up again in January, our main season. Yeah. Um, what we call our quarter, even though it really is half the year. Um, it. it goes from January to about summertime. And then Got we it. end it with our big event, which is our world finals event. It's kind of like our Super Bowl event. And oh. that's going to be happening in Salt Lake City next year. Oh, cool. Yeah. So World Finals is just like bringing all the drivers out or, or all the trucks and drivers Correct. out. That's, how many are there? Yeah. So there are, this past year, there was a five tours. Okay. Or I'm sorry, actually six tours. Okay. Um, at three arena tours, um, which was smaller uh you know, stages, if you yeah, will. Yeah. And then we have two stadium tours, which are the nice big floor right, events. Right. And then we have an international tour. And on every single tour, minimum are eight trucks. So, oh, wow. and then the stadiums, they're 12 plus. 
20 sometimes i'm like i'm trying to remember right now yeah. but like world finals we had gosh there were 24 trucks competing and i mean Shoot. just on the premises over 30 trucks so yeah it, there are a lot out there but even then i say that and it's like it's still very small community it's yeah. a small world. It yeah, is. no, totally. That's super, that's super cool though. Wow. What an inside look at this. Like, yeah. man, there is so much to think about in this sport. That's like, that's so cool. Yeah. There's just so much to think about. What's, um, assuming you're all good and, and going into the next, <clears throat> the next season, what are you looking forward to most? Oh, next year? I, it's wild. Cause Going each year, I have pushed myself to try and compete against some of these insane drivers and just push my skills. And I'm finally at that level where my confidence and my skills are like right behind as far as chasing yeah. some of these really incredible competitors. I'm really proud of that progress yeah. I made, but it's the consistency that matters. Right. So I am... As of right now, my game plan is just to stay consistent and keep building off of what yep. I've built yep. up already yep. because I, you know, going from when I started to now, it's, I call myself, I went from baby shark to megalodon. I yeah. really did. <laughs> I was peeweeing around the track and yeah. now I am doing things and, you know, holding these tricks that I just blew my mind the very first time I was trying them of like, how could I pull this off? How are these guys doing this? And so going into next year, I, I'm ready to just, you know, hone in on that. Got and it. Really get Got that it. Yeah, that makes a lot of down. sense. You're kind of digging yeah. your feet in. Yeah. Um, learning your, because I imagine like when you perf you're performing, it's like. Yeah adrenaline craziness like okay i'm gonna go do this and then it goes like that and you're mm -hmm. like man i've got so much to learn about the next one and then you do it again and again and again and now you've got the skill set yeah and you're like okay i'm ready to i'm ready to really make an impact now exactly so that's where you're at okay so you're exactly most looking it. forward to coming in and kicking some ass that's super cool pretty much yeah no i and it's cool too because being a female in this sport there are a lot more females coming in, but you're still a minority and you yeah. know, you're still maybe looked kind of like shrugged off. And so getting to come in and now win events and have that skill. Oh, I want to kick so all the cool. boys' butts. Yeah, like absolutely. Power. No, no offense to being a guy, but yeah, None I'm holding taken. it down for the ladies. None <laughs> taken. If you feel like an underdog, you need to kick some ass and go do it. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what are you most looking forward to outside of work right now? Like, how's your life? Oh, oh my gosh. I, it's incredible looking back from, I mean, just when I started drag racing to yeah. now, how much I've changed and I have very much been on in the last couple of years especially very much just like a healing self-love yes, self-care journey because yeah. for those who have known me my whole life I've been known to be a positive bubbly person yeah. but I didn't always feel that way on the inside mm. and I mean I think so many people can relate it's it's a hard cold world and a lot can happen to us and make us jagged and, you know, make us feel those ways. And so I have been through a lot and I've seen a lot of dark days and actually, especially in the last couple of years, especially, but at the same time, it has opened my eyes and given me the clarity of, you know, truly knowing what's important and that's yeah. loving yourself totally. and start there. And oh my gosh, you're going to be in a whole new world. And I, that's what happened to me. I went from being someone who was so hard on myself and, yeah. oh, you didn't win this race or you didn't get this sponsorship. Mm -hmm. This didn't work out for you. Like, oh my gosh, all the awful things that like, you're a loser, you're never going to succeed X, Y, Z. I was so cruel to myself as hard as I was yeah. trying to make all these things happen. Yeah. Like on paper, I was showing up, I was doing the work, but I was being so mean to myself mm. internally. Yeah. And now, oh my gosh, I am living in a whole new world of like, no, Ashley, look at everything you have done. Yeah. Like, look at what you have accomplished. Look at what you've pulled off. Maybe it didn't go the way you had planned. Sure. It isn't the way you exactly wanted, but yeah. there's still so much to celebrate and there's still so much to be grateful for. And I am just truly living in that yeah. now. And so I advocate for that so strongly. Yeah. And so that's what Ashley's been up to. Ashley's just doing Ashley. That's it's great. amazing. So it kind of feels like the Megalodon is like a metaphor for life. Whereas like you get to just go and 
crash into it and have fun doing it. Yeah. As opposed to just being like, because I feel like the um, drag racing was way more just like, okay, here we go, here we go, yeah. here we go. As opposed to, come on, I, yeah. I see you having yeah. so much fun, like when you get out of the car and stuff and <laughs> yeah. yelling at the crowd and everything, which is oh, awesome. Yeah. That's super cool. No, that is so interesting you say that because, yeah, drag racing, you were honed in, you're going straight, you're going one direction. Right. right. There is only one way to go. Sure. Whereas, Monster truck driving. I go left, right, upside down, backwards, forwards. You know, I'm Up, like down, the Willy left, Wonka right. you smash in the and That's what yeah. you're paid to do. <laughs> yeah, that's... no, and life is a lot more fun that way. It is. <laughs> no, absolutely. That's really, really cool. Um, well, cool. I mean, do you have any, what do you have any messages for your fans out there? Uh, no, I mean, I, I feel like we got to talk about some of the great things already. <laughs> and I just am so grateful to be be in this position and I more than anything if there's anything I could put out to anyone it's just don't give up don't give up on yourself yeah don't ever because I had all these dreams brewing in me and I had so many people look at me like I was crazy so many people who you know kind of uh, once again shrugged me off yeah, and yeah. shrugged off these dreams I had and yeah as hard as it was and even as hard as I was on myself during those days by believing in yourself and pushing through, but also now loving yourself and pushing through, yeah. it will be so rewarding because that's the whole point of life. It is the journey, not necessarily the destination. Right. And the journey to get to the things that you desire most, those goals, yeah. it, they're bumpy, but there's so much to learn and there's yeah. so much to love. Yeah. So many great people you can meet along the way. And I just invite everyone to go for it because yeah. you'll be surprised what will happen. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And just to go back a minute, like when you go through those tough times, you only really have two answers. You can like crumble or you can like push through it. And when you push through it, you have to like learn about yourself and what makes yes. you tick and how you can kind of be there for yourself a little bit more. So it sounds like you're doing a lot of that, which is really good. Yeah. And you're smashing other cars and kicking ass while you're doing it. So. Oh, yep. We're, we're having a blast doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Ashley Sanford, thank you so much. Where can people find you? Ashley Racer Girl on Instagram, Twitter. I'm Ashley Sanford 94 on TikTok. Ashley Racer Girl was taken. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, follow along the journey and reach out. All right, cool. That's it.